Uh, so welcome everyone to this uh, session of the SIPA seminar. Um, our speaker today is indeed for it. Um, we talk about, um, let's twist again, problem with vector units. Yes, thank you, Ignacio. So I will give the talk in English, um, first of all. Then I will mostly use the slide, but I will also write some things. I'm sorry for the people who are either watching the recording or at home, because I know that usually you get this screen first, and then it's very really difficult to watch the blackboard. But in principle, you should uh, see most of the things in the slides. So I'm going to talk about my recent topic of research, which is uh, medium varieties. Okay. Um, and more specifically, something called modular. You probably have heard of Fermat's theorem, you have heard of modularity results. These are like these big conjectures that relate analytic objects with uh, algebraic varieties and give, give all sorts of fitting connections. Okay. So, um, by the way, let me know if the slides are clear enough, and if not, I can clarify it. Um, so first I will give an introduction because I want to motivate why I want to study the objects I want to study. At the end, I will only talk about uh, abelian varieties and the endomorphism of abelian varieties, but I want you to understand why I'm imposing the conditions that I want to impose. So first I will talk very broadly about the objects that we have at hand. So here we have the picture of two scenes. This is an elliptic curve and a modular form for at least a three-year series. There's a reason for that. So very brief uh, intro slash recall uh, about the elliptic curves. As you know, uh, we love elliptic curves because they are the simplest curves that uh, don't give trivial things in algebraic geometry. And these are curves defined by y squared equals some of the basic polynomial. And I can have uh, this A and B in defined where any field, basically. And the other thing I am asking for is that uh, there is a smoothness condition. It will be a smooth curve. And actually, here, usually I'm missing some point, which is at infinity. So I look at this at a projection. As you know, these elliptic curves have a loop law. So uh, they are the first inter instances of uh, an algebraic variety, which has uh, a loop slash. Both points have a loop slash. Okay. And today I'm going to be quite analytical in some definitions. So uh, there are some values, which here I'm not denoted by AP, this will be recurrent today, um, which are essentially derived from counting points modulo P on the curve. Let's say these are these A and B are integers, and I can reduce the equation of the curve modulo P. I can count the number of solutions to the equation. These are finitely many, and then the AP is a value very close to that. And I define the L function of an elliptic curve with a complex variable S to be this infinite product. It is seen to converge, it has some nice properties like a symmetry of functional equation and so on. And it's a meromorphic function. Actually, it is holomorphic except for S equals one, but it can have a pole. This is very similar at the end to the Riemann zeta function, but it has it is holomorphic mostly and it will have a single similar. Then the value of AP, as I said, are computed by counting, by counting points on P. And this is one of the main objects of modularity. The other one, which is the origin of the, of the name, is, is modular form, that modular form. And I want to explain the full definition of modular form just for one. You have to know that they are functions on the upper self plane, complex numbers, they are holomorphic functions, and they satisfy very, very nice properties. Um, some of them are uh, transformation properties with respect to a matrix group. Usually, the matrix group I take is either S2 of Z, so the matrix is 2 by 2 with integer uh, entries uh, that are in at 1, or some subgroup of it which has something that we call a level, which is just a divisor of one of the entries. This is not very important because I'm not giving the definition of this transformation, but just know that they have some invariance. And then they have control growth at, at i infinity. And the nice thing of these, uh, and they are a lot of 
Oops. And the nice thing of this function is that they always come with a free expansion, which only has uh, positive indices or zero, but usually this two is zero for reasons. And then this an we tend to um, make we tend to make sense of in arithmetic terms. So the ap's that uh, came before will be related to these ans okay. when the p is a prime, the n is a prime. Um, good. So the nice thing is that from these forms we can always associate an L function to this pair. And this is again a function of complex variable uh, defined either by this integral or by this digital series, which is the most similar thing we can have to uh, imagine the function, but just the functions. And what I will say with modality is the following if I have an eigenform, I will say very little bit of an eigenform is, but it is a modular form, which is an eigenvector with respect to a lot of. Uh, linear operators and it has rational eigenvalues. By the way, the eigenvalues will be the ANs. Then I can build an elliptic curve from the form and then their L functions will coexist. This is done by regression and cohomology of certain variety. And this procedure is quite easy, actually. Um, you can learn it in a couple of months uh, by doing standard theory. And again, it's just integrating the function F and using a very specific. Uh, Variety that characterizes difference. But then, why is a lot of people k and gave the converse theory? That is, for every elliptic curve, which is defined over q, by the way, I will say that q, there will be some modular form with rational eigenvalues and rational Fourier coefficients, which will have uh, both will share the same effect. So this connection is done through L functions, which in turn have coefficients that uh, encode very specifically. So this is my first motivation, but uh, this is already studied. <laughs> Even then, there are some of the projections about this. So I want to do generalizations, uh, conjectural generalizations, of course. And what I want to do is consider another kind of modular form, which will be uh, in several variables, but which will also have some relation to another kind of algebraic variety. So I will let H2 to be the set of two by two complex matrices, which are symmetric. And I also ask that the imaginary, the imaginary part of, the, of this matrix, the real matrix, is positive. Okay. And then I will define a single modular form to be a holomorphic function from this set that satisfies certain transformation properties with respect to each group. Well, this will be a four by four matrix group, as uh, so a group of the symplect symplectic matrices. You don't need to know what those are. If you know, that's better. But if not, then worry, they are four by four integer matrices. And in particular, I will be very interested in the paramodular groups. These are just groups which are inside the symplectic group, but they are of this form. Uh, you don't need to learn what this form is. I learned this over writing it many, many times, but it has a specific also arithmetical importance because it also has to do with parameterizing and writing all the spaces of all the but that's, that's And then if this is the group that we're using, this group is called the paramodular group, so I will call this paramodular forms. And then as for modular forms, uh, this will have complete linear operators. There will be a of eigenforms and a free coefficients, and then L functions. And I want to use these paramodular forms to generalize modularity. Uh, okay. So to generalize modularity, I cannot use the elliptic curve because that's where these are included in the other case. So I have to introduce a video varieties. And this will be a generic varieties, which are defined over k. And they have two morphisms, one that I will call multiplication, and another one that I will call inversion. And then some e, uh, which is defined over k, but some point just that are just identity. And such so that the set of points uh, defined over, let's say, the algebraic closure of k, you can think of q all the time, so, because it's just a single group. Uh, this will be a group which, by the way, will be committed. The Abelian. Um, examples, of course, elliptic curves, they have a group law. And then, uh, an example that is very close to our setting is the following. If I take a matrix here, which is that so these are two by two complex matrix, uh, which is symmetric and it has a uh, imaginary part which is positive definite, then I can form a sort of lattice inside of the square C and I can form this quotient. 
what this question is is actually a uh, it's called a complex story we have uh, it is a surface yes it is a complex variety of dimension okay that because it is a, the uh, quotient of uh, c2 by some this case of that. so this is a new but we can prove that in this case this is an abelian surface so it has equations defined over some field not necessarily q Okay, so the paramodal conjecture, and I write two things, uh, two remarks here. This is a preliminary version, we have an updated version at the end of the talk, and then there's a uh, totally wrong version because it considers too many of them. But for my purpose, it is that should be a rejection, which is by no means proven, from paramodal forms with rational free conditions, like values, to abelian surfaces, A, uh, defined over Q, so with, uh, they are algebraic varieties, so they are defined by polynomials over Q, which have trivial endomorphism. We will talk about the endomorphism in a second, by the way. And then I'm, I'm asking, of course, that this rejection goes to the functions, so the functions have to touch that's a good thing. The problem is that in this case, we don't have a construction in the middle. And this is a very big problem because um, we can produce examples easily. I can classify paramodal forms. I can classify them in the two places. I maybe can compute them, but if I have one, I cannot say this is the other. Okay, and these are made. Having said that, I want to remark that I'm asking for three years of the range. And now we will talk about the range problem. So the name of this. Uh, this should be the title of the total property, okay? The GL, the GL4 type. And you will learn in a second what this is. And I will talk about the median varieties of GL4 type. The first example, example of this is, of course, an abelian surface. Okay. What's my set? I will take an median surface and any prime L. Okay. And then it, it turns out that I can build a continuous valor. For non experts, let's see what this is. Um, so, of course, I have the field of rational numbers, and then I can take its algebraic product, which is the field of all algebraic numbers, of all the roots of polynomials with coefficients in the And then I can take its color, which is just a group of symmetry that fits. Okay, then a, a this will have a topology, and then a representation will be here it is continuous, that's what I, why I'm mentioning topology, but actually, this is an homomorphism of groups within this Galois group. And this group of matrices, GL4. You don't need to worry about QL if you know what it is. Perfect. If not, don't worry. It, it's actually just amorphism into a group of 4 by 4 4 by 4 invertible matrices. And this is called double representation. So any abelian surface has one of these representations for each prime. And this comes from the action of the Galois group on the points. What I'm saying is A will be inside of some very free space. Okay? So if I have a point on A, I can act. So if sigma is any element in this Galois group, each of the coordinates of this point will be algebraic numbers. So I can just act sigma by this, and then uh, I will get another. Of course, I'm assuming that A is defined over Q. If not, this doesn't work. It should work with other fields. So here, all the time, I'm working with varieties. And it turns out that the L function that I say uh, I can associate to every abelian variety is quote unquote because there are some technicalities, but um, a, a characteristic polynomial of the product, the infinite product of certain characteristic polynomials that I get, that I get um, associated to each prime P is uh, runs over all the primes, pro L is fixed here. Usually you have to do some trickery, but it can be fixed. Okay, so actually looking at the L function for me is the same as looking at the characteristic polynomials that I get from uh, doing images of the representation. So this representation and everything associated to it is going to be more important even for me if I don't want to work in the LFP setting. And then the connection of abelian varieties with parameter fold, of course, will require studying this representation and knowing everything about it. Okay, so in general, if I have a, a variety which has dimension n, by the way, um, I have the GL4 representation. So this is why I'm calling uh, the dimension of the GL4 variety. 
Okay, but if I have an, a variety which has dimension n, the representation will go to GL2 n of QL. So the, the dimension double, that is why from a square field I got dimension four, but here I cannot do anything. But I can. Okay. So for it, this happens for the primers. And what I want is to be able to lower the dimension of the machine. I will, I will not tell the technicalities of this, but it is a very standard procedure. Um, so I need to study the, the correct uh, thing to do is to study the endomorphisms of A. I know why it is that sometimes you can lower this approach. Okay. Uh, usually I, I get to talks before at Simba and I was always talking about hydrogenics. This is the slide on hydrogenics in this, in this talk. So if I have an abelian variety, I will have an endomorphism ring because everything has an endomorphism ring. Um, so this will be the ring of, of the set first of morphisms from A to A, which are both morphisms of algebraic varieties, so they are locally defined by polynomials or quotients of polynomials. And then uh, I ask that these morphisms are also uh, group form morphisms because they are algebraic variety. Because it's an algebraic group, this is also a group with the sum and then I have composition. So this is a group. Okay. And two technical but quite important points. First of all, sometimes I will prefer, mostly I will prefer working with this endomorphism ring than sort with Q. Because then I can invert some things and, and the classification is much more easier. Yeah. And then uh, if I have a field that contains Q, Usually inside of the algebraic closure, we will distinguish the set of endomorphisms defined over K by writing this. So I didn't tell you this when I defined the endomorphism ring, but when I say morphism of algebraic varieties, you should uh, think of these quotients of polynomials that define this morphism, and these polynomials will have some coefficients. I'm referring to the, coefficient, the field of coefficients of this, of this set of polynomials. So if I say defined over K, have to think of morphisms for polynomials are defined over that. Good. So first, uh, I have introduced this uh, set, this ring. Then I just want to see what at first the more basic thing, which is characteristic. This will have characteristic zero. Why? Well, if I have an integer, I will have because it's like an abelian loop. I will have a morphism which is multiplied by a, by that integer, and it's positive by some entangle point. It will be zero, I get zero always, and if it is negative, I just subtract n times. Okay. And it can be proved that if m and n are different, then we will have uh, a difference between these, these two morphisms will also be different. So the ring uh, z injects to the endomorphism ring. So the endomorphism ring is characteristic. This is very important because it makes our lives easier, probably, with the observatories that we know, and it's, that's good. I don't have a theorem, which is very important. I don't think it's trivial at all, which is the following. If I have any field inside of QR, I have a closure, and then this endomorphism algebra defined over K will be a finite dimensional Q algebra. Okay, what is this? This is just a ring which has Q inside. Okay, for in instances of matrix, al matrix algebra, any uh, n by a and by n ring of matrices over a field F that contains Q, for example. Actually, any field that contains Q is a Q algebra, a finite dimensional Q algebra. I will talk of quaternions quite a bit today. Okay? Any ring of quaternions which is defined over Q will be this kind of algebra. I will talk about quaternions in a second. First, some examples, okay? There are some elliptic curves for all elliptic curves which are defined over Q. I will have a trivial endomorphism algebra, just Q. But for some of them, over Q bar, I will have a larger endomorphism algebra. Uh, in this case, it is a field. Then I can have some curves. For instance, there is this curve which is y squared because x to the right to the one. This is not an elliptic curve, but in the language of geometry or topology, this has genus 2. And associated to every genus G, Curve, there is a dimension G of the variety. In this case, this has genus 2, so there is a surface which has uh, the following endomorphism algebra over Q. It is trivial, it is Q. So there is Q bar, I believe it is uh, Q adjoining a fifth root of the. So 
So this is a filter that I before. I'm quite sure this is a So a more complicated example, uh, just to be a buyer and join the party, anyway. Uh, there is another curve, and there is a, I think that you can produce families of this curve. Another curve also of dimension two, <coughs> which will also have an associated uh, surface. Notice that this curve is only defined over filter uh, the four over two, because it has i and square two. And, well, maybe of the two. And then the anamorphism algebra of this curve, of this uh, surface, will be a quaternion. When I write this notation, three minus one, uh, this is to signify the following that you have a quaternion algebra, which is defined by this one i, j, i, j, which technically they are symbols for the q, as the q vector space, but then I'm saying that i squared equals three and j squared equals minus one, and then they are they are the Okay, so you know this uh, maybe from versus an algebra or something, some things that the quaternion Hamilton usually have a minus one and minus one equals less. In this case, I can generalize it. Okay, so these are there are examples of non commutative algebras, and this will be quite important. Okay, and now I can define an abelian variety of GL4 type. What happened with surfaces? I had a surface which has dimension two. And usually surfaces have no external morphisms. They always have Q as their endomorphism algebra. And this has, well, degree one over Q, right? So it has half of the degree. Um, then I will define an abelian variety to be of GL4 type if its endomorphism ring over Q, but the technical point, contains a number field which has the Greek half, number field is E, I can write that. Um, whole degree over Q has half this half of the dimension A. This is what happens on surfaces always or almost always. Um, and could happen for larger dimensions. In particular, I'm asking that the dimension is a number, of course. And then proposition I can lower the dimension of the relations for each prime, um, generalized prime, let's say, you know what that is, that's okay, not think of a prime. There will be a one representation from the other group to GL4 of a larger field, which is not the field I had before, which are the addicts, but it, it is a finite extension of the previous two. So you don't need to worry about that. It's just an extension of the field I had. How this is done, I maybe have time to say a few words. So before I had GL4, which acted on uh, course GL4 of QL. Is acts on, let's say, QL to the fourth. Okay. In general, I would have GL to N acting on QL to N. But then, if I, if I have another field here which is acting, let's say, in lambda, um, this is also a lambda vector space, but then it has lower dimensions of the lambda vector space. And because of the degree of the lambda, these things work out to me. So a, you can think of when I have a complex vector space, this is also a real vector space of twice the dimension. This is a similar. Very similar. Okay. Um, having said what a GL4 type in a uh, variety is, so I only need to worry about the lot of representations of dimension four. I will say that the general principle for studying a lot of representation, just a more to a uh, group. Will be the, is to say that these representations are the type determined by its traces. That traces. This is roughly correct and usually um, true for our matters. So um, I will now describe some things in the parts of the morphism ring in terms of these traces. Okay. So I will define two fields. One is the center. Of my endomorphism ring, but only counting the endomorphisms that are defined over Q. I said that is an algebra, so the center is just a uh, set of ring of elements that commute with, uh, with everything. And then I will define F to be the center of the uh, algebra with all endomorphisms company. So this is a smaller than a circuit because this needs to commute with all of these. 
And those are fields, we can put that. And in particular, both will be inside of the field E, which is of the very uh, half of the relation. Okay. So I have already a generation of fields, and studying them is quite important. Okay. First, I need a, a technical definition because I will restrict to, to those kind of fields. Some of you already know it. I will say that the field F, extension of Q, is called totally real if every time that I put F inside of C, actually this inclusion is done so bad. So uh, usually a field has many inclusions into C and just saying that um, they're not inclusions into C, it is totally real. And from now on, I will suppose that the center of my algebra, the metric algebra, which is F, is a totally real field. Because if not, things tend to be far more complicated and more interesting, maybe, but we don't know that. Okay, and this is the first result. I think new result that I can think of on this. Um, if E was a maximal field inside of this monophysical ring, because it could be that uh, my, my field was also large, there was an also large field. And then I wouldn't have a GL4 type representation. Maybe I will have GL2 or GL1. Or even zero three, or anything lower than four, and those are studied independently. Zero two is very studied. Zero one is overstudied as well. So I'm just fixing in a maximum field. This means there are no other fields inside of this algebra. Then my endomorphism algebra defined over Q bar will be a matrix algebra over D, where D is either the field F or a quaternion algebra, which is the find over F. This is to say, the same as I did here in the blackboard, but now there is an S matrix. So the coefficients that I put for this are uh, plus. And then adjusting it. And then I square will be some A, J square will be some B, and both, let's say, will be in F. They will not be zero. Okay? But this is a, a typical quaternion algebra. And so I'm asking for some other condition, but no, it's technical. So the, uh, this uh, geometric and normal geometry can be one of these two things. What's happening geometrically? A will be a geogenous, think a geometric if you want, but if you know what a geogenous is, will be a geogenous to a power of another abelian variety, which is simple, it doesn't contain uh, sub varieties, and which has as a normal algebra this D. Okay, so the, this N and this N are the same. So you can work out why I get matrices. Okay. These are some questions of that. I can leave the space for later. But... Okay, continuing with the traces. Uh, some new results as well, I guess. Um, H is an extension of F, which is generated by all the traces. Uh, traces of, of Frobenius, if you know what that is, if not just in the traces of the representation. Okay. Um, but moreover, this extension is Galois and Abelian. This is very important because uh, it makes our work uh, much easier. If I just have a sequence of traces, I have the collection of traces, I can generate these fields, both F and H. F is also generated by traces over Cuba in another way. And then I can already have clues about what this Galois group will be. First of all, it is a Galois group because, because this extension is a Galois extension and it is also a can you recall how you define H? Yes. H uh, is the center of the anamorphism over Q. And F is, is, is a field, a subfield, which is the center of the anamorphisms over Q. Okay. Uh, and I will call this Galois group the group of inner twists. It's not a twist in the title, by the way. Um, the why I put them in the title is because the other object that appears in the title doesn't have any inner twists. And this will be a problem. I will talk about this in a second. Okay. But why are these twists important? Well, what is a twist, first of all? Why have time? Let me erase something because. Okay, so a twist typically 
is just a character uh, from the value group to, let's say, a field. Let's say, two bar. This is sometimes also called the leadership part. Right? Good. And why I'm calling this a twist? Well, because then um, if I have some sigma in this lava group, it will turn out that every trace will satisfy the following. It will, if I if I conjugate this trace, I will get this chip, this, this type of sigma, times the trace again. So the behavior of any sigma on the traces is very, very well known. And even more, this character actually goes to the edge. So it's not uncontrolled. We know the values of, of chi because edge is a finite extension of q. We know that these are the most values of unity. So this is called twisting usually. This is also, it also appears in the language of modern forms. So this is why it makes sense to call this the problem. Let's go through examples. I draw a hyperelectric curve here. First example, which I like a lot, and I discussed it with some of you, is Master's family of genus for years. I can define um, if I have some parameters, which is B, I1, and A2. Let's say they are rational or whatever, but it doesn't matter. A curve which has, I believe, degree 10, yes. And this degree 10 curve actually is a genus 4 curve, topologically. Okay. So, uh, because it has genus 4, it has an associated variety of dimension 4. So we can prove, first of all, this uh, fourfold is generically simple, it doesn't contain any sub varieties, you know. And moreover, it's a dimorphism. Uh, Ring, it should be algebra, it should have put a tensor by Q, times Q square root of each other. Okay. And this is, by the way, uh, let's just check uh, very, uh, in a very simple manner that this is actually a yield for a curve. Okay? So this has dimension 4, and this has the root 2 over Q, which is half of 4. Okay? And moreover, this will usually be both F, H, and E. So usually this will not contain any more endomorphisms, and when I go to K bar and to Q bar, I will have will not have any more endomorphisms. So this is an example of all the fields being equal and uh, the endomorphism being rather small. And then an example I'm quite proud of, and I don't want to get to worry about the lambda formulas. I can choose some parameters and write a family of polynomials. You can write explicit formulas for this, but in reality, it's just a rich polynomial, degree one and degree two. And we have crafted some equations so that we satisfy special uh, properties. And then I can build a genus two curve because it's given by a polynomial of y squared equals a polynomial of degree five. So this again has genus two. And then I can take this, which is the Jacobian. So again, it is a surface. And then I can take another factor, which from this surface I give me a Dimension for a linear variety. Okay. Doesn't matter. I get a fourfold which has the following. The endomorphism, uh, the endomorphism over Q are exactly Q square root of two. So this is both E and H because it is a dimension four. I need the B2 field, which is this. And this is both E and the center, which is H. And over Q bar, what happens? Well, in this case, this does have this does contain uh, some varieties. So I get um, matrix and I get M2 of it. So actually, uh, here is a first example, let's say, where F and H are not the same, and I have at least one in the first. So I could compute uh, the APs in the representation, the traces in the representation of this curve, which are related to this A, where it comes all from factors, and then they will satisfy relations. Okay, and then the next example I would like to, pre to present you are fake surfaces. But I don't have an example. Uh, there is a paper, or maybe they construct one, but you have to check about that. And in any case, it, they don't, it doesn't have the properties. 
What are fake surfaces? Well, for one, they are not surfaces. I like them very much because they are the varieties of dimension four. Why do I call them surfaces? Because they look like surfaces. Okay, let's see what that means. First of all, I'm asking the dimension four, and then I'm asking that the normal system algebra, both over Q and over Q bar, is a quaternion algebra over Q. One, I wrote those before, but here they are written together. This will be a variety of GL4 type. Why? Because this D contains many fields, which are very true. Because if I only take Q and Q of I, this I is just uh, something that satisfies quadratic relations. So as long as I put A and on square, I, I will be a square root. Okay. So this contains indeed the quadratic field. So this is this should be a uh, GL type of variety. Now what's the problem? The problem is that F and H are the same. This wasn't like the second example I showed you, but A, H and E were the same, but F was a smaller. Here, F and H are the same. So I have no inner twists. What does that mean before looking at the If I have inner twists, I can compute them. I can compute the difference between F and H because I can get all the traces and say, oh, this, uh, this guy is directly related to this gamma. Uh, Actually, there is a mistake, but you don't need to worry about it. I will write it correctly so that at least this is the correct answer, but don't worry about it. So this is an important um, I can compute what the inner twists are, and I can compute the fields S and H just, be, but just from the representations. But this in principle, what, what happens in principle? If I have A, F, and H, I cannot get any new information from traces. If I, if I only have a sequence of traces, well, they will all lie in Q. There is no twisting there, there is no characters, there is no character. But even more, if I have some uh, element in the group and I look at its characteristic polynomial, it will always be a square. Why is that a problem? Because this polynomial has the grid four, and it has coefficients in Q. Now, if I have a surface, and I got from this a GL4 representation, the characteristic polynomial of this will have the grid four, right? Because these are the image of this is always a uh, vector metric, so the characteristic polynomial has the grid four. So this being a square here, it looks like I'm looking at the square, so at a times a for a surface. This is also a dimension four by, but here I'm asking for varieties which are not of this kind. So if I have a variety like this, no problem, I know the dimension, but if I only have the characteristic polynomials, I don't know whether I'm looking at a variety like this or at a variety like this. And this is a very important problem. Okay. Why? Because these surfaces, well, they will be associated to paramodular forms, as we said earlier, but this could also be associated to paramodular forms. And that's the problem. I can say a bit more, but I am saying it's like we see double. It's like we see twice and a little okay? And I have two more slides. So, as I said, someone, Ferrari, uh, said that if I have a single parabola form, it could happen that there is a fake surface, a uh, core for its quaternions, such that the L function here, square, the L function of the fake surface is the square of the L function of a uh, parabola form. And the problem is that only from this parabola form, I cannot tell whether it will correspond a fourfold or a square surface. And this and we don't know how to solve it. The same phenomenon happens sometimes with modularity, and we also do not know exactly how to solve it, how to distinguish whether the variety that should correspond to this check is a fake surface or an actual surface. But I guess this problem with fake surfaces is that we cannot distinguish them from actual surfaces. And this leads to stating my last slide, which is the second and updated version of the paramodal conjecture. 
there should be a rejection from paramodular eigenforms with a coefficient in Q and the Dijon union of both abelian surfaces and cage surfaces. And in that case, the L function of the variety will be either the L function of the form or the square of the, the, square of the L function. So this is exactly 40 minutes. So thank you for the attention and please uh, make any questions that you No, you <coughs> notice that I put this is a technical point. I put Roe, not Roland. If you put Roland, then you will get two representations which are isomorphic over the field QI. Okay. But they will be the same representations because everything is a kind of And they both will have the same characteristic of the denominator, of course. And then you will get the same. I don't think there is uh, we have any questions in the chat, but if you want to ask. Maybe it's like uh, this question that in the definition of inner twist, I suppose that there's at least like twist in general. Okay. And why it's yes, in that. Yes. So it, the idea is that when I have a character like this, let's say I have two characters for two entities. You could say, let me erase some things so that it's not confusing, but um, if I write, let's say, this, I can do it just, this is the product actually. Just, uh, product, uh, not product. You could say that this is the twist of psi by chi. And it's essentially what's happening because you get something like. Maybe I'm getting some minus one point. Okay, but this is, I said for every prime, I got a representation of lambda. But then this lambda, I can, I can congruate it because it's a, it will be another prime, maybe different, and then this is the twist. The, but it is inner because it comes from values from the, the actual prime. But you can always do that. So if you have a representation, you can always tensor it with some character. And this is the idea. I was, I, well, it's not so related at some point. You mentioned that you were looking, well, you were supposing that it, it was a four dimensional variety and thus that was and had no some varieties. Mm -hmm. um, how general is to have or to not have some varieties? I mean, in general, in, in the varieties, it's normal to. Good question. I think it's more unusual to not have some varieties. For instance, I will talk about moduli spaces, and I don't know much about it. Okay, but the you can look at the moduli space of uh, dimension two surfaces. Uh, sorry, two. A two is usually the moduli space of abelian surfaces. Okay. But then this contains um, some. Let's say this is a lot of quotes. The, the product of elliptic curves. So a product of two elliptic curves is also, well, this has, uh, in the language of moduli spaces, this has dimension three, yes. And this has dimension only two. But then this means, it is a generic condition to not have some varieties, because having some varieties means we don't need them. And I suspect this holds up with the dimension. So this is even worse with dimension. It's generic and it And then the other thing is if you have a sub variety, you usually study the representations of that sub variety. And the chances are that you get, say, GL2 theory, these model forms. 
You get GL1 sandwich, GL1. Okay, I will see for the time there are no questions in chat, so thank you again.